All right, so let's now turn our attention to our input script and start to capture all the inputs that the user is providing. So for, in this case, what we're going to do is just use the keyboard and the mouse uh, to set up where the reticle should be point placed and where the actual turret should be pointing towards. And we're also going to capture just the vertical and horizontal axis on the keyboard so we can move the tank forward and back and turn it left and right. All right, so we're going to take a look at a couple of C-sharp components here, um, most notably the C-sharp properties, and this will just allow us to protect our data, but still allow other scripts to access the data without having to mess with it. All right, so let's hop over into Unity and take a look. All right, so let's uh, focus on the inputs here. Okay, so if you remember from the last video, we automated our setup for our particular tank controller here. Okay. Uh, so let's pop open the tank inputs here and let's go in and start to set up our regions. Um, as you can tell, I do this all the time before I actually dive into coding anything um, because I like to organize and just keep everything nice and clean. Um, it helps everybody out on your team. And, you know, even if you are just a single developer, it helps you out as well. Just keeps your sanity so you don't lose your place especially if you come back to your project after a week or a month a year you know what I mean so uh, what we're gonna do in order for us to actually place the reticle where the mouse is pointing we need to get a position from the camera all right so the camera is going to be our main controller for that reticle position all right and to do that what we need to do is we need to provide the camera that we want to use uh, to place the, the reticle. Okay, so if we jump back into our script over here, um, I'm going to place down a public property or a variable here that is going to take a camera, so a type of camera, and I'm just going to call it camera. All right, so that is the camera that we want to provide. So the next thing I want to do is uh, put a little header over this. So these are one of those attributes that you can put into your scripts just to give a little bit more information about what these particular properties are for, these variables are for, okay? So I'm just gonna call this the input properties, you know, just keep it nice and simple, nothing crazy. And, you know, for our script, we're probably not going to need the start method in this case, okay? Uh, we don't really need to initialize anything, so it's a good idea just to keep your scripts nice and clean. If you're not gonna use any one of the built-in methods, just get rid of it, you know, and it just helps keep everything nice and clean, okay? So at this point, what we want to do is I want to say if I have a camera, all right, I'm going to run some functionality, okay? So I want to create my own custom method um, as they're referred to inside of C Sharp. So I want, to, I want to go here and say I want to run all the code that is in some method that we're going to create here pretty soon called handle inputs. And the reason why I like to do this is because I want to create methods that are flexible. Okay, so I'm going to call this the region of custom methods. This is where I'm going to put all my custom code. All right, and like I said, the reason why I do this is because I want to keep this handle inputs a, a flexible method. And by flexible, I mean I want to be able to override the functionality in it just by creating um, another script and saying that I can override that particular method. I don't want to have to go and set up another script with all this functionality in it. I just want to keep that in our base script here in this tank inputs. And I, I only want to override the method that's handling the input. So to do this, what, what I like to do is use the protected virtual void. All right, we'll call this handle inputs. Now, that probably needs a little bit of an explanation. All right, so when we say that something is protected, it means that no other class outside of this class can actually access this particular method unless it inherits from this particular script all right so this is a, one of those first steps into polymorphism and inheritance inside of c sharp so what happens is if i wanted to create a different type of inputs for my tank i would create another script i would inherit from this particular script i wouldn't inherit from mono behavior i would just inherit from this particular script and I would then just override the handle inputs. So then I wouldn't have to rewrite all of this code right here. All right, and it's in the base script. Okay. So while I'm here, 
let me actually scale the code up a little bit for you guys. I know that uh, in the past, uh, a few individuals have said that the code need to be bigger. So hopefully that works for you. Um, okay. So what I want to do now is I want to create a couple of C sharp properties. Okay. Uh, because what I need to do when I move this particular reticle around, let me go back into unity here. When I move this particular reticle around, I need to store the position that we want the reticle to be at, and I want to store the normal information. All right. So let's jump back over into Visual Studio here. All right. And what I want to do is I'm going to create another region. Okay. And I'm going to call this my properties, like so. All righty. And I'm going to create a private vector three. All right. So a vector three stores. X, Y, and Z information. So position in world space or local space, right? I'm going to call this the reticle position, like so. And make sure I name that correctly. And to actually make a C sharp property to allow another class to access this particular variable, okay, we need to write public vector three. All right. We're going to call this reticle position. And then what we're going to do, it's going to look kind of like a method, but these are C-sharp properties. Because what I want this to do, okay, is I want another script to be able to access this particular property, but currently it's set to private here, right? Which means that only this particular class has access to this vector3 variable, all right? So what we want to do is we want to allow another script just to get the information from this particular variable here, we don't want it to set it as well. If I were to make this public, that would mean that any other script could also set the variable, the data inside that variable, okay? So I'm gonna make it private so it can't do anything with it, and we're gonna allow another script just to get our information. So I'm gonna say return the reticle position, like so. All right, so let's do the same thing for the normal. All right, so private vector three, uh, reticle normal, and I need to make sure I put the semicolon there. All right, so we're going to create that property now. I'm going to call that vector three, and it's going to be reticle normal, like so. And we just want to get the value. We don't want to allow any other script to set it. There we go. So that's C sharp properties. That's just a quick overview, really. All right, there's a, quite a bit. You can actually have a code that actually runs in here as well. But I don't really want to dive into the nuts and bolts of you know, C Sharp. I'm going to save that for the C Sharp series. All right, um, that is definitely going to be coming soon. I, I promise you guys I'm going to do the full on IndiePixel intro to C Sharp uh, for Unity 3D. Okay, so uh, I promise. All right, so moving on. Now that we have all that information, what we can do is we can come down here and we can say that we want to get a position from our camera. Okay, so when I come over here into Unity, when my camera is hovering over the game view here, okay, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to place the reticle wherever my mouse is. So in order to do that, we need to get a position from the camera in screen space and put it into world space so it hits the, the ground over here. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is come over here into Visual Studio, and I want to create a new ray. Okay, so this is a type of ray, and we're call, going to call this the um, screen ray, like so. And we can say that the camera dot screen point to ray. All right, this is the the method that we're going to use. All right, you can see that it returns a ray going from the camera through a screen screen point. Okay, so our mouse position is our screen point. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say input dot mouse position because that's our position in the screen. All right, that's the X and Y position on the screen. And what this will do is it'll return a ray that we can use then to cast into the scene. And if it hits any sort of collider, all right, it'll actually return back for us a position in world space and a normal. Okay, so to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a raycast hit. All right, this is gonna store, not a raycast command, raycast hit, and I'm just gonna call it hit. 
So this is going to store that hint information for us because what we need to do is we need to say if uh, physics dot raycast. Okay, so we're going to raycast into the scene. Okay, so if we do in fact hit something, all right, and in order to test if we hit something, we need to provide it a ray, all right, and that's going to be our screen ray, all right, and we're going to put that information into this hit or this raycast hit variable right here. And you can see we have a bunch of different overrides. And this is the one that we're going to use right here. Okay, so we're going to do our out. So we're going to output the value into that hit variable that we created, that local variable there. All right. All right, so if we hit something, all right, so if this method right here returns true, that means we hit something, and it's going to put all that data into this hit variable for us. All right, so if we hit something, then what we're going to do is we're going to say that the reticle position is equal to our hit dot point. And our reticle normal is equal to our hit dot normal. All right, the hit variable or this raycast hit variable stores all the information about what was hit by this raycast. Okay, and because we are creating these private variables right here, we're storing that information in those private variables and then just letting another script access or get just the information using the public properties. So hopefully that makes sense. Definitely let me know if you have any questions about properties or the uh, virtual methods right here. I'll be more than happy to answer that. All right, so with that, uh, what we can do is we can actually start to test this just to make sure that it's working. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to appear in the built-in methods. I'm going to utilize another built-in method called on draw gizmos. All right, probably used this before, but if you are new to Unity, I'll uh, walk through how this works. So this allows us to draw little gizmos in the scene. All right, and these are just graphical representations you can use to visualize your code and your data. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say gizmos.draw, and we're going to draw a sphere. So let's draw a sphere in the scene. All right. And now you can see that this particular method needs two arguments here. It needs a center or position in world space and a radius, and that's the radius of the sphere. So we already have the position. All right. This is that reticle position. So it's that world space position. All right. We're going to do reticle position. And I'm going to give it a radius of 0.5. All right. So with that, now we're, we're drawing a sphere in the screen. What I want to do now is I want to differentiate it by giving a, a special color. So I'm going to say color.red. All right. And there's a bunch of built-in colors inside of all of this, inside of C Sharp. I'm going to use red, though, for now. OK, so with that, uh, we're pretty much good to go. We should see a sphere right where the mouse is at all times, because what's going to happen is it's going to hit the ground plane here. OK, so if I were to turn on my gizmos flag right here, you'll be able to see it in the scene view as well. But to see it in the game view, we need to turn on this gizmos button. So I'm going to hit play. And we actually haven't assigned the camera to the input. So that's why we're not getting anything. And also, our tank is currently using gravity, which is why it's falling down. We need to assign a collision mesh to it. But to get started, let's go and drag and drop the camera into our tank inputs there and take a look again. All right, so now you can see that the little red sphere is actually following our mouse. OK, so that is the start to making this all work. All right, so let's finish up our input script uh, by going and just putting in the vertical and horizontal values. All right, so we're going to do the same process here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a private um, float value, and we're going to call this our forward input. All right, we're going to create a public property for it. All right, we'll call this the forward input, like so. And we'll just do a get and return that forward input, the private variable. All right, so let's just copy this. Well, we've seen that a, a few times there. All right, and there is a shortcut for all that, but I'm going to save that for a little bit. All right, so we're going to call this the uh, rotation input. And I always just capitalize the property name just so I know that it, 
is associated with the private variable or which variable it's associated with all right and i want to copy that and then paste that down like so and there we go all right and these guys are easy so after we do the raycast here what i can do is i can say that the forward input all right the private variable is equal to input dot get axis and by default in unity the w and s keys are set up to the vertical and that'll be our forward inputs and our rotation input is equal to our input dot get access horizontal like so and with that we've got all of our inputs all set up and we've got enough information now to place our reticle so i'm going to close out the video there we went on a little long but not, nothing too crazy let me know if you guys have any questions um, regarding properties or virtual methods and i'll be more than happy to answer them okay thanks so much